What is happening, guys? Welcome back to a new episode of The Dead Talk. So today we have a very special guest, and the only way I can describe him is not all heroes wear capes. So our guest today is five-time Ireland's strongest man, uh, UK's strongest man, second in Britain, and who's behind the world's strongest man. So today I'd like to introduce you, Mr. Pa O'Dwyer. What is your best deadlift, PB? 240. 240? So 250 today? Nah. I tried to do like 220 there a few weeks ago. Not with that attitude. <laughs> if you're all wondering, um, Pa is going to do one hand. So I'm going to attempt to keep up with John today using one hand and <laughs> try not get injured for next week's competition. <laughs> I am going to use a strap though. <laughs> no, eventually I will. Great start. <laughs> John, I should tape the middle of the fucking burn. So Pa, I'm going to get straight into it. Your worst DM you ever got off a fan. I, and I kind of know the story, so this is... Um, I get loads of weird DMs. I get them every day, <laughs> unfortunately. Um, and unfortunately for me, they're all male. <laughs> it's never a, a fucking model or someone like that that looks for them. But um, probably the worst one I got was this guy who contacted me, and he was messaging for ages. He goes, um, he was over in America, and he was like, I want to fly you over to America. I'll pay for all the flights. I'll put you up for two weeks, and I want you to come over and wrestle me. And I'd pay you five grand if you come over and wrestle me. So I was looking at this going, <laughs> no. So I ignored it. So I sent me the following day, sent another message. He's like, I'm serious. I've had other people over to do this job. I'm 100% legit. If you look into it, I didn't. You'll see that I'm actually genuine. So I think I was talking to someone. So I can't remember what strong one <laughs> or what name him. And he said, Your man was legit anyway. So I was with a couple of lads one day, we were working, and I showed them the message, I was like, do it for the crack, message back. So I messaged them back, and I was like, okay, what's the crack? So he said, I want to fly you over, basically, and I'm into wrestling, kind of bear hug and stuff like this, and if, you're being for, if you'd be up for that, that's what I'm going to do, I want to pay you to wrestle. So I was like, yeah, I'll fucking wrestle, no bother. <laughs> so the conversation went on, and after a while it was, he wanted me to wrestle him for money. And I was like, where are we wrestling? And he was like, oh, just kind of in my house, you know, I was like, okay, that's a bit weird. <laughs> Do you want me to fly you to America to fucking rest you in your, in your kitchen? So then he was like, and if you break any bones, I pay you extra. And I was like, okay, that's weird. He was like, for instance, if you break my ribs or my arm or fingers and stuff like that, I'll pay you a thousand euro for every bone you break. So I was like, what? So he was like, I will pay you per bone. So if you break my finger, a thousand ribs, a thousand. And it says, if you want, he says, I haven't found anyone to do it yet, but I'd be willing to pay you five grand to crack my skull in a headlock. And I was like, in America, if I crack your skull, there's a chance I can kill you and I'd spend the rest of my life in jail. What good is five grand then? <laughs> Fucking lunatic. But, um, so how long were you there for? I was two weeks in America <laughs> and I made 12 grand. <laughs> and there's a warrant out for my arrest. <laughs> When was the first moment you discovered that you were a strongman? Like, did you go to the gym intentionally to be like a bodybuilder? Or were you always kind of like... Yeah, I went to the gym to become bodybuilder. Like, my first love was bodybuilding. Um, like, I've, oh, I still have my all the Ronnie Coleman um, magazines. Amazing, like, there wasn't yeah. much YouTube and shit back then. Yeah. I've all these CDs that he used to fucking send out. Um, so I kind of started off bodybuilding. And then, like, it wasn't, I was in the gym a couple of weeks or months. And I was up around deadlifting 200 kilos, which is massive at the time in the gym. They're like, Jesus, having a 200 kilo deadlift is massive. And then this little competition came up along Cork. And it was like fucking, it was like it was meant to happen because yeah. it just popped up my Instagram or my Facebook at the time. And I said, do you know what I'll do for the crack? And I said to my girlfriend at the time, it'll be a bit of fun, something to do on a Sunday. So I landed down with the Cork and there was like 23 guys turned up. And I was like, fuck. And I was small back then. I was only... 15, 16 stone at the time. And there was these guys that, they were the usual kind of strong men, the big fat cunts, you know, that can barely come out of each other's way. <coughs> so I rocked up, and in a long story short, I came fucking, I made a mistake in the stones. I just wasn't, it was my first time doing this at yeah. the stones. Made a mistake. But I ended up coming third overall. So I was like, this is kind of, you know. Yeah, I was like, I might stick at this for a while and train some events. I, I'll tell you a funny story. It's not a really funny story. I remember the first time I heard a pad wear. <laughs> I, I'll tell you that, all right? And this is weird because 
I came home. I hope it's not from Twitter. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't that guy texting me either saying, call America. But I remember coming home and my, from the Brandon gym um, after a workout. And I was actually quite young. And my dad was like, you'd be interested on this doc. It was a TG Carr. It was a documentary, I think. Oh, right. And I think you were in that gym and you were throwing kegs over a thing. And it was like, you're on, um, like it was like a TG Cahar documentary or something. And it was that unit behind there. I don't know if that, like, do you remember that or anything like that? No? I don't think so, no. Because you had so many uh, things. <laughs> yeah, I don't remember that. But yeah, I can, I can remember, yeah. Things. I don't know, was it TG Cahar? It was something in a, they did some. I've done a couple of TV things down yeah. through the years, like I've been doing it the last 10 years, so. I remember, I don't know, were you throwing a keg over fucking, I don't know, you were throwing something into the air anyway. I don't remember throwing, I remember one time I did um, like a thing for the, this, <laughs> it was the six o'clock news in RTE. Was that, that it? That, that must have been And it was yeah. inside in the bat. And what, yeah, it was what, it was Because your, like. your man was from Kerry, he was like, what would you do now after getting home from training? And I said, I'd jump into a nice fucking ice bat and like ice bats weren't the thing back then. And he was like, do you mind if we record? I was like, I, yeah. I might keep my shorts on just. <laughs> yeah, I, I remember something like a, like some documentary thing. So I don't know if it was a documentary or something anyway. That's when I first. It was a bit of a thing. I don't know if it was in that gym. I remember I, there was a part of it as well. I think you were open up a sliding door into the gym or something like that. She said, no right Like that. that. <laughs> Hopefully, I'm the, I'm the right person. Yeah. <laughs> a different sexy cunt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So you seem to be this happy superhero guy on Instagram, but does Pad Wire have any bad days? Absolutely, have bad days all the time. Um, like prepping for strongman shows at my level, you, I get a lot of hate because I, I tend to have an opinion yeah. <laughs> on a lot of things. Um, so like I'd be talking a lot of shit online and just kind of air my opinion all the time and I won't ever hold back and all I ever tell is my opinion of what I think is to be true, you know. True, yeah. Some people don't like it. Yeah. And else, because I'm opinionated then, it kind of opens up channels where people tell you what they think of you. Yeah. Whereas if you never said anything, like I see things with other strongmen that never say open their mouth and they get no hate. Yeah. So kind of close off the channels for yeah. other people to have an opinion on you. Whereas I air my opinion, I'm open for it, so which I accept. And I get a ton of shit all the time online. But since I started this kind of... <laughs> this, new superhero. this new lease of life and... Yeah. I was kind of thinking, about, like the way I seen it was, I'd come, come across them. There's a lot of strong women that were getting all the hate, and these strong women are fucking unbelievable athletes, yeah. and they get nothing but hate and shit. And I could deadlift that, and of course you could deadlift that. You're a male, do you know? Yeah, yeah. And he's comparing himself to the 50 kilo female. So yeah. I could deliver this. It's like In you're insecurities. All, insecurities, is, and it was driving me crazy because I fucking love to see these women just smashing weights yeah. and all that, and. Then I'm surrounded by a lot of people who are, dead, who are strong. Like both my sisters are inside the gym, my mother's inside the gym. I was training with Maya Frawley, who's strong as fuck as well, do you know? So I'm surrounded by people who are really strong females. Yeah. And even though they never really got hate, I felt that I, because I'm fast witted and I have a great way of <laughs> offending people, I said I'd use my superpower yeah. and just start tattling some people online. And that's kind of. Start that I stuck up for people and do you ever get um like like a lot of people you 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 could probably get thousands of positive comments, but do you ever get that one negative comment you're like, oh fuck, that kind of hurt now like or you're just kinda of like ah. no. Um I used I used to let it get to me one time because if I was prepping for World's Strongest Man, um like obviously World's Strongest Man is such a hard competition these days because World's Strongest Man used to be occupied with people who were part time strongmen part-time electricians, part-time strongmen, part-time fucking truck drivers. Yeah. Now it's, they are professional athletes, they are dedicating everything to go to World's Strongest Man. And I'd be prepping for these shows, and why is Padwire invited? He's shit, they're only inviting him because of his personality, which is probably true. <laughs> um, but I was getting just a ton of shit because I wasn't like Brian Shaw, or I wasn't yeah. like Tom Stoltman, or, or all these other guys. But like, currently at the minute, I'm ranked 16th in the world. Which to me like, is fairly good considering like I'm probably, this, I am the smallest guy at World's Strongest Man. 
Um, when you compare me to like Brian Shaw, who's over 30 stone, Tom Stone, they're all at the average size of a strong man, at world's strongest man is six foot six and about 28 stone. So I am six foot two and I'm about 20 stone. I'm about 135 kilos at the minute. What's the, what's the heaviest you got though? The point where you're kind of like, okay, the heaviest this, I, this, this is enough. <laughs> <Yeah. so. laughs> and like the, I often thought about that bulk, like the heaviest I got to was 142 or three kilos and it just felt unhealthy like because just, like I have three kids as well. Like when you're running around after three year olds, yeah. and like you know it as well, you fuck yeah. you have the young lady as well. When you're running around after three year olds, and you're 142 kilos, you're like, oh yeah. my god! And it's the back pump, it's the fucking sweat, and it's fucking everything. So I was like, this is uncomfortable. And plus, it never paid off for me in strongman. It wasn't any benefit. Like my deadlifts didn't didn't skyrocket either. Do you know? Oh. And then when you look at the likes of other strongmen who were not big fat fucks, like Adam Bishop, for instance, who's probably the best deadlift in the world at the minute. He's only 140 kilos, and he just shows that you don't need to be this giant. Do you know? Yeah. In 2020, we had world's strongest man winner, Alexei Novikov, who was 130 kilos and he won. And he actually won the max deadlift. Do you know? Yeah. So it just proves, I love guys like that. They're, like, they're inspirational to me because they can show that you don't need to be fucking seven foot tall and 30 stone yeah. to be a good strongman. And you actually can be in shape and actually can And you can, can be in shape, be exactly, yeah. yeah. So, like, probably right now, I'm probably the strongest and fittest I ever am because, like, I have a great coach. I work with Luke Richardson, um, who looks after fitness and strength in a kind of perfect balance because there's no point being statically strong and not fit because you'll just get caught out. Yeah. At the end of the day, a strongman show can go on for five hours, so you need to be fit. You need to be mentally fucking tuned in as well because it's such a long day. Like, yeah. that day of a strongman competition. I have Europe's strongest man. Um, I have Europe's strongest man Saturday week. And that day starts at seven o'clock in the morning and doesn't end until two o'clock in the morning. So you're looking at, that's like, off the top of my head, 20 hour day. Jeez, it's a long day. It's a long day. So you need to be physically and mentally fit. So that's not it's not easy. That was a long answer. <laughs> Ah, so Pat, do you think that strong men hide mental health problems because they have a stigma of being this unit of a man, this unit of like n hardcore, nothing can, you know, destroy them? Like if I looked at you now, I probably think like this fella doesn't have any fucking mental health problems. This fella's, you know, yeah, <laughs> do you know, because you, when you look at strong men, you just think like, the fuck, do you know? Yeah. Like at the end of the day, you used to think like even though a strongman may be seven foot tall and over 200 kilo body weight, he's still a man at the end of the day, do you know? Yeah, yeah. And there's a lot of demons to deal with as well because like especially in the road to being a strongman, a lot of it is dealt with alone. Like no one wants to train six, five, six days a week, mm. do you know what I mean? So a lot of strongmen end up being very lonely. Um, but to be fair, like a lot of us are kind of fairly in tune with our mental health as well. Um, there's a strongman, Luke Stoltman, who's a great advocate for mental health and he kind of opens up a lot and Luke would be a legend in Strongman and generally you see people like Luke and even myself open up sometimes it kind of helps other people say well maybe I should talk about my feelings a bit yeah. more do you know yeah and it's some people think it's a sign of weakness and you talk about having down days and all this sort of thing it's not a, it's a sign of strength when you yeah. can talk about your bad days and talk about your weaknesses and talk about things that upset you do you know and even like even this week is a really bad week for me because like um, a friend of mine a guy I grew up with um, killed himself there last weekend and even though I'd love to be at home just kind of sitting in the corner and fucking crying and all these things and I have I fucking do you know because yeah. I'm going to miss him but I have your strongest man to deal with so i have dedicated for him exactly yeah that's yeah. it yeah so I just come into the gym and try and get the shit done and either way like unfortunately he's gone either way yeah. so but I do talk about it and I think because you've been shot, like when I first met you, you had like what 20k followers. Now you've 252. Yeah. Thousand. 253 like, today. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's another thousand. The last. Yeah, yeah. Um, but like you think about like when you open up your mental health, like even if you help a few thousand mm. men. To be honest, if I open open about mental health and I help one person, one I'd be person. happy. Do you know? Yeah. I don't care if I only help one person. Yeah. Any of my reels, if I just make one person laugh or smile. Yeah. I don't give a fuck. Or if I just help one person, I'm not pushed about how many no. th these big numbers I help. If I only help one person, I'm happy, you know? Yeah. And that's kind of another reason why I do it and the way I do, because they're kind of funny. 
and people are looking at it and they're laughing and they're, do you know, if I find someone, I've, someone comments laughing faces, that to me is a fucking bonus because bonus, I made yeah. someone laugh, which is what I do it. But I'd say it's, it's a lot more beneficial when you stick up for the person and then that person DMs you mm. and say thank like, because that person could be yeah. thinking I've done something. The, yeah, the yeah. latest one was the, the one with the squat. I think he had a disability and people battered him because he was, had a disability in his squat and weird yeah. life. But he still had the bar and he's back. Mm. He was still trying. Exactly, yeah. And there was these people that like were taking him down and then you stick up from then. That probably changed his whole yeah. mindset and whole... And, yeah, and then to me that would be amazing if he did change his mindset. You know, of like me and like another guy that did it was um, Joy Wall as well, yeah. who helps these people out. And like they messaged me after, like, and they'll write me a big message like, you've helped me so much, you've brightened my day. I yeah. kind of thinking of, like, the big thing for me, and I get a lot, is I'm thinking about uploading more on my journey now. And yeah. that to me is fucking amazing, because they're proud, <coughs> they're more proud in of their compliments, you know. Yeah. And people think I'm doing it for fucking likes and views and all that shit, but, like, it's Instagram, you make no money on Instagram. Zero. I'm literally doing it for these, because I'm getting messages every morning saying, thanks so much for this reel, and you helped my friend out, and thanks for this, and you know, so it's, yeah. it's amazing that I'm able to give back to them, because I've spent the last 17 years oh. inside the gym lifting weights. And it's nice to be able to give something back and give yeah. some people hope and share their journey, do you know? It opened more do more opportunities, more doors. So Even when you help when you helping all yeah, these people, yeah, like yeah. that would link to coming to, you know, having it going getting invited to talks, mm. talk about it, help talk about mental yeah, health. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, like what when was your first one you've done? Do you remember your first My very first call of video was one that was done to me. And his world's strongest man shared this video of me. Um, it was a bar on my back, it was 120 kilos. And I squatted and jerked it up and I caught it with one hand and I stood up and I threw it over and down. And one of the comments was this fucking idiot was in the comments, if Pa focus more on events and stop fuck acting around, he might be actually an actual good strongman. And I just went to, I went onto his profile and it was open, it was full of <laughs> stuff, and I was like, Oh, thank you. Because I love when I'm ripping someone a new one and they leave their profile open and they have tons of footage for me to work yeah. on. Which is brilliant when that happens. And he had loads and he was a sumo deadlifter, so <laughs> <laughs> Went to town on him. And you, you edit them yourself, then? You Everything every myself, yeah. yeah. Um, like in each one of those reels, some of them are fast because it depends. Uh, if yeah. a video gets a ton of hate, it's so easy to find it. And these days, I, I don't know, I think it's the last six months, the amount of hate people get on Instagram is multiplied. Crazy. I don't know what it's about. Everyone shows and the highlights. It's weird, it's not even. It's a fake world. It's, it's so weird. Like, you'll never see someone like me getting hate or as such. Or a strongman getting hate. It's always like I've had to do three or four different reels in eight year olds. A so fucking eight year olds. Lift, lifting, lifting weights. I've seen that, yeah. Tons of women inside in the gym lifting. Like, if women who are overweight, they'll get hate if they're not in the gym. And then they go out to the gym and they work out and they're still getting hate. Yeah, yeah. Do you know, it's, it's a, you can't keep some people happy. But when you see all these hateful comments, these are just reflections of their own insecurities and how much they hate themselves. Yeah. When they're calling you a cunt online like that. Technically, they're just calling themselves a cunt. Yeah. Do you know, and they're jealous a lot of the time. Who's, who would be your most famous follower? <laughs> Do you know what? One of my most famous followers, and I'm a huge fan of him then as well, and I've been a huge fan of his for years, and he actually messaged me Monday night, which was great, because I was feeling down about the loss of my friend that, yeah. um, which is uh, Taika Waititi. I don't know if you know him. No. But he's a famous film director. Cool. So he directed Thor Ragnarok. Cool. Hey. Um, there's this comedy show called What We Do in the Shadows. So he acted and, and does that. He's a ton of, ton of work done. He's a comedian. And he messaged me. He was like, God, I love your post, bro. And I was like, what? He's, do you know who he is? He's married to Rita Ora. What? <laughs> this fella, yeah. So he messaged me out of blue Monday night. He was like, I love your post, bro. And started to follow me. I was like, fuck. <laughs> do you ever get like asked to be an extra in a movie or something like Vikings or something like that? Like, do I've done a, yeah, I've done a couple of extra work. I've done a couple of different series in RTE, just as, <laughs> and it's normally any time they want, the, the way they pronounce it is looking for a burly guy. Probably the one I watched, I saw. <laughs> yeah. I, what was the one I watched? It was, um, I can't remember the name of it. But I remember I met, what's the name on the, on the show? We actually went training and we went for fucking a sauna afterwards. Do you remember Love Hate? Yeah. Do you remember Fran? Yeah. Fran. So I, hung, I brought Fran to the gym and we had the fucking sauna and everything afterwards. <laughs> but yeah. See, it, open, it opens doors to so many It does, yeah, exactly, yeah. 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 So, so hopefully many. I'll be in the next Thor film. <laughs> <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha.
not too bad. <laughs> I can't balance the cunt. Can you give us your best and worst moment in your whole strongman career? <clears throat> yeah. We'll start with your best, though. My best strong moment in strongman was um, coming second place to Britain's Strongest Man because uh, I beat a ton of brilliant guys and I only lost to the current world's strongest man, which is Thomas Thortman. And I kind of kept up to him as well, which for me was a massive boost because I showed, proved to myself that um, everything I said a minute ago about I don't have to be this giant to keep, to keep up with these guys, you yeah. know, because Tom, Tom Thortman is six foot, like when Tom has his shoes on, Tom is six foot ten. And he's 32, 33 stone, so he's a monster of a man. And the fact that I was able to keep up to him, like, with my lower body weight was amazing for me. And my worst moment was, it was following that. Because when I came second to Britain's, I qualified for World Strongest Man. So I spent all from that moment, three months of prep leading into World Strongest Man, and got off the Worlds. And um, when we got to World Strongest Man, we're tested, right? We're tested, drug tested, we're medically tested, we're tested because the last thing they want is some fella out on camera in front of millions of people worldwide dropping dead, right? So you do a medical before you leave here and you do another when you land over. <clears throat> Did my medical here with the doctor, everything's bang on, my blood's perfect, everything's fucking perfect. I do them a lot of time, I think everyone should. Yeah. Not only people in the gym, but everyone should be getting bloods, blood work done every three to six months. So everything's bang on, landed over to America anyway. The doctor over there who wasn't a qualified doctor, she was like, uh, I don't know what the fuck she was, but she wasn't a doctor anyway. But she couldn't read my ECG reading. She goes, so we're gonna have to get another one done. Um, and we're gonna book you in tomorrow morning. <coughs> so I was thinking, for fuck's sake, right, okay. So this was tomorrow, and it was the day after that World's Strongest Man was starting. So it was like unnecessary pressure for me anyway. Which straight away would have spiked up a lot of fucking stress. Stress levels, cortisol, increase. cortisol, all that shit. <laughs> so I had my test at four o'clock that evening. The clinic closed at half four or something like that. So we had a lunch around one o'clock. Over in America, the cans of rain are 400 milligrams of caffeine, right? I didn't think twice about it. And this World's Strongest Man is sponsored by rain, so there's fridges everywhere, hundreds of different flavors. <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> fucking throwing down cans of fucking rain. So I was like, fuck, this rain is class. Walked over, <laughs> to the, I was waiting for to get my taxi and I was holding a, I had a can in my hand and an open hand this, this end. I was rattling out from all the fucking caffeine. And Mark Felix, who's a strong legend, was out in the door and he goes, Mark, like, he's a huge, but he's a soft voice. And he goes, where are you going? And I said, I'm just going on. I have to get a second fucking ECG done because they can't read the one here. And he says, and you're drinking rain right before you go? And it was only then it fucking dawned on me and I was like, Fuck. <laughs> Threw all the cans into the bin, started drinking water. <clears throat> Got down there, they hooked me up to the ECG and they're like, you're going nowhere here. You're staying in the hospital. hospital. Yeah, because I thought, and I was like, no, trust me. I said, I'm after drinking about seven cans of rain. I said, it's, it's, I'm normal. I'm normal, I swear, I'm normal. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, no, there's something going on with you, honey. We can't leave you out of here today. Had to get a fucking echo. Had to do all these other tests. And because of that shit, I was gone into fucking panic mode. They tried to do my blood pressure. My blood pressure was through the roof. And the clinic was closing at five o'clock. So it didn't give me enough time to fucking relax or I was pure tense and everything. They were like, sorry if you're done. And just like that, my opportunity that I prepped for, like leading the Britons, three months leading up to that, broke my fucking whole diet and everything. Got my everything bang on train. It was so good as well. And they turned around to me, sorry if I we can't let you compete. And that was the end of it. And I was like, but, but, and like. How was your mental health after that then? Oh, when you got God. home? I was given that news at about five o'clock in the evening. I just went to my room. And I was like, I fucking bawled. Because I put so much fucking effort. effort into that. So much effort. I broke my hole in the gym. I never not break my hole in the gym, do you know? And I just fucking cried and cried. And then at about eight o'clock, they announced it on their Instagram page. It was, it was like a second kick into the bollocks to me. Pa with an X across me, eliminated, and brought in a new guy. I was like, oh. So yeah, my mental health for a long time after that was fucking bits. Um, but like that, got back home, spoke to my coach, readjusted, and started prepping again. Start prepping, yeah. Do you know, I, didn't be, I don't like to fucking bear in it too long, do you know? Yeah. Uh, like, it doesn't benefit anything. Do you know, the only thing is next time is, don't, <laughs> don't drink so much rain if I get an ECG. So it was a lesson learned. <laughs> do you know, when you're five times, is that five times in a row? Five uh, 
um, the strongest man? Or is there like a gap in There between? was a year I didn't do it. Um, the organiser is, God, how would I put this in a nice way? <laughs> He's a very hard man to get on with. Yes. yes. And he ended up walking off. Um, so I skipped it that year. So any time I did it over the last seven years, I won it. Yeah. Do you think like if there was if there was like another version of Pad Wire, like another fella who was just a tiny bit behind you, you're battling head to head, mm. do you think you'd have that bit more of a... Oh, definitely. If there was someone... Because I think you got a bit more like... Uh, see, no one ever pushed me. Like, pushed you, yeah. In the five years that I won it, I won four out of five events. Do you know? I was yeah. never pushed. pushed. I was never pushed hard enough. But because I knew I was never going to be pushed in this country, I was comparing, like I'm best friends with all the lads in the UK and America, so I compare my lifts to them, which has benefited me. So I kind of did the same thing that what you're saying is if I had someone here to push me on, no, it probably would have benefited me more because it would have put more pressure on me. See your competition. Do you know, exactly, yeah. yeah. But I just, like when I got to Britain's Strongest Man, I'm up against it anyway. Do you know, so I compare myself against them. So that's what I've kind of used in that sense. Did you ever consider moving to Britain? English? Consider it for a while. I remember I went to a fortune teller once. <laughs> and she said to me, for you to progress, um, you need to get out of the country. Go away. Yeah. So I'm still here, so I'm not going to progress, I suppose. <laughs> yeah, no, your Instagram and stuff. And See, well, yeah, another thing she said to me was, uh, whatever, she didn't know what I did at the time. She goes, whatever you're doing now, you're amazing at it, but it's not what's going to bring you stardom. Yeah. And so that's kind of, and it's funny because, like, I switched my Instagram over Christmas from Strongman as such to kind of comedy, which is what it, the route I want to go down. And since I did that, then it's just 200,000 followers, you know? Shadow banned twice. Shadow banned, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> shadow banned about six times. But a lot of people are getting shadow banned, you know? Yeah, it's, yeah. It's a pain, though. I don't know. Instagram's kind of weird at the minute. It's, it's like, cause as I was just saying there, the last night I was just sitting at home, got an email, your live account has been deactivated. It doesn't go, it's going against our terms and things. And I was like, the lab account, like, I was like, it's, it's, PG, it's, it's, yeah. it's a gym page, like, unless someone tried to block us or someone put in a report. No, I got it back straight away. You just sent, you literally just send them a, an email and say, look, and they brought it back. And they were like, yeah, that's all fixed. I was just like, well, Jesus, you know. That's I think, weird, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. God, like I it, yeah. That. Oh my God. So, but you can say cunt in videos. You can, I've looked up, you can say <laughs> cunt in videos, but two out of, like, I think there's four videos of mine that have been deleted, and two out of the four, there was no cunt word in it. Go away. So I was at the Instagram went, nah, it was random. But I followed this guy, one of the, a guy I did a reel for, and he's this bigger fella trying to lose weight, and <laughs> like recently three of his videos have been blocked because, I, he doesn't know, I don't know, Go it's away. just him, just, it, normally it's just him just doing the deadlift or doing a bicep curl. But then, yeah, but then there's a woman then who created a loophole for OnlyFans. I saw it, bit breastfeeding. Breastfeeding, yeah. yeah. She just whips them out and puts yeah, the baby yeah. there, but that creates a loophole. <laughs> Linked into her some, OnlyFans. Yeah, which is mental to me. Like, she can get her tits out and they're using a <laughs> fake baby. Do you know? Yeah. Just... I, I, that's mental to me. <laughs> that that's allowed and I can't call someone a cunt. Is this, this 210? My math's right? Or is it? 210, yeah. Twitter's great if you want to wank. You want to what? <laughs> Twitter's great if you want to wank. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, speed off the ground now again. Pull it hard. Up. Oh, all the way, all the way. Up, 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 up. Good. That was heavy. You want to do that one hand now and just... You can definitely do more than 250. <laughs> and your kids, how many kids do you have? Three, is it? I have three kids, yeah. They're all, how old are they? Uh, Sienna is 16, Rocco is 12, and Freddy is three. Do you see a bit of, like, genetic like, strong in them? Um, do you know what I've seen them? No, not so much Sienna, because Sienna's kind of like the girl and girl, doing the girly yeah, stuff yeah, and stuff yeah. like that. But with Rocco, he, Rocco has it in his head, and it's great that he has this in his head and he can't see how it's not going to happen. His confidence level is fucking amazing, which is kind of like mine. Um, and he thinks he's going to be, in his head, he's going to be the next Ronaldo. He loves soccer. Breaks his whole soccer, doesn't miss any training sessions, doesn't miss any matches. Literally has it in his head that I'm going to be the next Ronaldo, which is a fucking amazing thing because even if you don't hit the Ronaldo level as yeah, such, and you're yeah, just, yeah. just shy of it, you're one of the best soccer players in the world, you know? Yeah. So that's his confidence level. Um, 
They say, there's a saying, you don't pick your sport, your sport picks you. Yeah, that's yeah. it actually, yeah, that's so true. Yeah. That's a good saying. Um, and with Freddie... Uh, <laughs> Freddie's tree, he's just wild. <laughs> <laughs> Freddie's wilder than, like I know three-year-olds can be wild. Yes. But Freddie, um, do you know what I say? Would they take on, children take on the DNA that you have, like your DNA changes all the time. Yeah. And your kids take on the DNA that you are in yeah. the moment that you made the child, obviously. Um, and obviously, I'm kind of, I, like my early 20s, teenage years, I was way more timid. Um, whereas now I'm kind of more <laughs> strange, or probably is probably the word you'd use. And Freddie is wild. Freddie's wild. He comes home from school. And like, for instance, Freddie came home from school yesterday, comes in, drops his bag. Are we going fighting today? <laughs> I was like, what? I said, how was school? Are we going fighting today? And I was like, oh my God. So he goes over, picks up the box of the glove, and he's like this, right. trying to get it down the box of the glove. And he's walking towards me, and I was like, here we go again. So I think Freddie will actually, and he, it's funny because he looks like Paddy, Paddy the Betty, Paddy Bim, oh, Bimblet. Yeah, he's got the long blonde hair. But I think he's a, a chance in the UFC or boxing. It'd be hard, like you know yourself. I've... I have visions of him actually being in the UFC. Go away. Um, just because he's that hard note, like I'll hit him. <laughs> I won't hit him. But like when we're messing, and I'll hit him a dig and punch him in, yeah. mess him with ribs. Doesn't take anything on board, he'll come back and he's already blocking a tree. So there'll probably, <laughs> there'll probably room for him in the UFC as such, but it would be hard then for me watching your child get beat up without. Yeah, go in there um, beat him up. Without me joining in. Yeah. Do you know that? Lying in the cover I'd paper. be protective that way, very yeah. protective. I suppose it comes part and parcel of being a big, strong mm -hmm. man as such that you become a protector. Do, do your kids, like obviously the oldest probably knows, but do your kids really know like, you know, your pad wire, five time Ireland yeah. strongest man, like you probably walk into their school and all the students are just kind of like, Jesus, <laughs> yeah. you know? Yeah. Do, they, do they ever, like, I, I suppose no one's really gonna, all your slag of your dad because then they're like, yeah, yes, yeah, so, because I can't because I'll just rock up to their house. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> what is yeah. the issue here? <laughs> it's mad because they, like, we see you as Pad Wire, Ireland's strongest man, but they just see you as that. Yeah. Do you know, it's... Yeah, yeah, and they kind of eye roll and stuff like that because I know even the last day I was telling Cena about, um, like, Cena would be a fan of Rita Ora and I was like, you know, Rita Ora's husband <laughs> missed me last day. <laughs> <laughs> and she was like, oh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think that's pretty cool. <clears throat> yeah. All right, let's try. All right, let's <clears throat> It's all the high rocks now. <laughs> Easy. There's way more there. <coughs> I think if we made a, a reel out of this, it'll go viral. Ask him, Pad the Wire, what are his thoughts on Sumo Deadlift? Um, <coughs> <coughs> Checks that mic work properly. I have a couple of issues with sumo. First of all, it's not a deadlift. It's not a deadlift. It's like, it's comparing apples and oranges to me. Sumo, deadlift, them two words should not be joined together ever again. Uh, for two reasons. It changes completely from what a uh, conventional deadlift is. It's sumo lessens the range of motion. And now you have a thing coming into powerlifting where this kabuki bar, right? What is that? It's called a kabuki bar. It was made by Chris Duffin. And the bar is skinnier and five inches longer, which makes it more whippy. So now you have guys like fucking Jamal coming out here and they're doing these thousand pounds deadlifts, but it's neither a deadlift nor a deadlift bar. And it's just absolute garbage to me. So if you're, if the, if you're the world record deadlift, that has to be conventional. Has to be conventional, yeah. Has to be, which is great in strongman. Yeah. And like people say, oh yeah, you have these big stupid bars and strongman. <laughs> we do, we have big stupid bars and strongman, but it's a, con it's a different record then. Yeah. So we have a silver dollar deadlift record. We have an elephant bar deadlift record. We'll never take away from what a standard traditional deadlift is, which is what happened in powerlifting, because they're taking away records that were broken 30 years ago by the likes of Eddie Cohn and stuff like that. And they're literally changing the bars and the equipment. When you're doing that, you're changing. Mm -hmm. It's like, for argument, it's like swimming. If you start adding in fins to all the lads, it changes what swimming is. Do you know what I mean? 
because of course it's going to be way faster. Yeah. So if you change the dynamics of power lifting by changing the bar, a skinnier, whippier, longer bar, it's not, it's not a deadlift bar anymore, do you know? And it's not a deadlift. Ban and sumo. Our, our, <laughs> last, our last guest was uh, Alicia Quinn, so she does sumo, so two of you can battle it out here one day. You go on this side, she goes on that side, and you, you both have your... <laughs> if you want to, but she's going to lose. <laughs> um, so you've been, obviously, beginner, amateur, now you're a pro. Is there dickheads in the pro levels? Is it like, what's it like being an amateur? Is the <clears throat> amateur a bit more banter than you get to pro? Is that a bit more banter, or is there, or is there dickheads, basically? Um, in my professional career, like I've been in pro ranks now for a while, I know all the lads down to Pojanowski, the Brian Shaw, Eddie Hall, all the guys that you'd imagine would be kind of dickheads because they kind of give off, like Eddie Hall in particular gives off a bit of a dickhead persona. He's one of the nicest guys you can meet. <clears throat> in my professional career, the only dickhead I met, met was Jamal Browner. Now, technically, he's not, a power, he's not a strongman, he's a powerlifter, but he was invited to a strongman show as a part of the deadlift championships. And now, I, I, I earned him being a dickhead to me because I called him, not that I called him out online, I literally slagged his deadlift or his sumo lift. <laughs> And like, I if I'm slagging you, it's because you're one of the best in the world. Yeah. You know? So I insult him because he's, he's one of the best powerlifters in the world. When he showed up to the World Deadlift Championships, he was an arsehole to everyone. He was an arsehole to the staff, the crew, to the other competitors. And there was just no need of it. There was no need of that nonsense. He walked up to one of the most, the biggest names in Strongman and asked, are you here to watch me deadlift? And your man was like, I'm here to do the Strongman <laughs> show. What are you talking about? Yeah, ego. So it's just, he's probably the only dickhead I have ever met. <laughs> Did you ever meet like a world's strongest man where you thought he was going to be a bit dickhead but he turned out to be like a really nice guy? Like, where, did you ever meet a fellow and be yeah. like, I thought you'd be way different now and do you know? Yeah, uh, my very first world's strongest man and the current champion was Brian Shaw, four times world's strongest man. And I remember I was first out to deadlift and the world's strongest man can be a hard competition. So I was told to warm up at such a time and I was told wait and stand the, on the, you're basically waiting to go out and deadlift. <laughs> so I stand like that, I was waiting, I was standing there maybe 25 minutes, Brian Shaw came over to me, he goes, don't lift, he says, you're, after, you're not warm anymore. Like, Brian Shaw was competing the same day as me, he's like, you're not warm anymore, if anyone says anything to you, I'm gonna fucking stop them, they'll not be done, go back and warm up again. He says, this is dangerous at this level. He says, forget that, go back, warm up again, and I look after them. He said, fuck this shit. And he allowed me to go back, and he stood up the world's strongest man for me, he was like, because I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have been at a level where I could say, I'm not doing the lift now because yeah. I'm not ready, you know? Yeah. You just have to go when you go as an amateur at the world's strongest man, as a newbie. Um, whereas Brian Shaw stepped in, he goes, this is absolute bullshit. Pa, go back and warm up again. We don't want anyone getting hurt here. World's fuck off. <laughs> so it's Brian Shaw is probably one of the best people you could ever meet. And he was four times world's strongest man. He's probably one of the best strongmen I've ever met, to be honest, out of like amateur, in intermediate, pro strongmen. He'd do anything for you, do you know? Tell me about the pressures of been on the world did you feel pressure there is pressure because like not only are you trying to be your strongest and at a competition but you also have this like they'll tell you they'll literally tell you do not hide your personality if yeah. you get a personality do not shy away if you don't have a personality make one up start yeah. roaring and shouting rip off your t-shirt don't be strolling <laughs> up to the bar and doing a lift and putting it back down because it's not that type Making of sport born, yeah. strongman unfortunately it's more wwe than it is a sport yeah do you know and people want a bit of roaring and shouting, and, and it makes a better show, to be fair, do you know? So, the thing about it is, there's a lot of pressure on you to perform as an entertainer, more so for me, because like I'm kind of expected now as the entertainer, entertainer so they want more, yeah. even more for me to be putting out there, do you know? And then you have to be <laughs> literally strongest, like Britain's strongest man, for argument's sake. Pa, act the cunt, do a bit of messing joking. So you're messing joking, and then you have to go after to 400 kilo deadlift and do it for reps. So you literally go to ha ha ha. And then in. <laughs> <laughs> so now you're they, switching. They literally. expect that from you, you know? Yeah. So yeah. you're going from literally two different complete places all together. This happy, playful, entertainment place to psycho mode, trying to deadly 400 kilos for reps. And that just takes so, it's so draining mentally because I go after the competition that night, I'm lying in bed and I don't know if I'm pumped or if I'm tired and I can't sleep and you're tossing and turning. It's, it's a hard game. Yeah. Are you, go, are you going up again? No, I'm done. <laughs> Fuck that. <laughs> so we'd say, all right, your Instagram, big, big following. Probably going to hit a mil in the next, do you, do you think you're going to hit a mil in the next two years? Um, I've intention of hitting a million before Christmas. I, I can see that happen. I want to hit the million before Christmas. Yeah. Um, that's kind of like a personal goal of mine, just hit the million before Christmas. 
if Instagram doesn't block me or ban me anymore. Like, I'm just after fucking coming out of a shadow ban yesterday, so uh, if I keep getting shadow bans, it, it's going you show me one day, it's just completely. It completely def deflates it completely. Um, so if I can just be smarter and try maybe do some more collabs, maybe, yeah. just to help. Do you ever think you're going to call the wrong fellow? I hope I do. <laughs> <laughs> if I like the only time I go after someone online is because they're being an absolute cunt. Yeah. And if they want to come after me, I'm happy to go ahead and deal with them. You know? Yeah. I, yeah. Because you, you you haven't ever come after a fella that, that didn't, didn't deserve it. That you didn't know? deserve it. So like. <laughs> yeah. And you know what? I came after James Smith a couple of times. I came after him twice. Um. And he's a blue belt or some jujitsu. Yeah, yeah. And if he wants to roll around with James, <laughs> I'll roll around with you. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna use that as a reel. <laughs> <laughs> Take him. Um, yeah, so what is next for Padware? So next for me is I have Europe's Strongest Man next week, two weeks after that I have World's Strongest Man, and then I would like to, like I have ambitions of actually going on stage and doing like comedy on stage. That'd be good. I think for the crack, because like I've been, I've, I've literally sang a song <laughs> that I didn't know the words to the 20,000 people in Glasgow last year. So like coming into and being afraid of going on stage doesn't come into my head at all. Um, so I'd love to get on stage, like, I have a couple of good friends in comedy that said I could do open acts for them just to get into this and then hopefully go on my own and maybe fill the stadium sometime. I'd love to, that would be Your goal. one of my goals, yeah. What are you going to do after Strongman? The, the that would be it, yeah, yeah, comedy or films or something like that. I'm not going to fall into, a lot of people kind of fall back into fitness and coaching. I have as much interest in coaching as... No, none. I think you found your kind of passion. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I tried to get into coaching a couple of times and I do coach people... The odd Probably time, just a bare few, like you know, just, just a few, yeah, just to, like they actually need help, and I, I don't charge them for anything or anything for it. But no, I couldn't. I'm not responsible enough. Yeah, <laughs> and like with your Instagram, do you have a? Do you make how many videos do you make a, a week or even a day? Because you uh, post around. Sometimes there's like two a day. Is it? Sometimes I do two a day. I do one of the, the talk ones once. I do maybe them four or five, five a week. Um, because a lot of effort goes into them to kind of perfect them and make it right. They do, yeah. Um, and then like there's a lot of back work that goes into that, like tr find the right reel, yeah. find the right comments, find the right profile so I can rip them, and then think of ways to rip them and not getting banned on Facebook, you know. Yeah. <coughs> but it's great these days because <coughs> I have great followers who send me different ideas all the time, they send me all these different cunt memes, so like I don't really have to work anymore, they do me. And me and the boys were saying it, we were like, how do you find the people, but then I think one of the lads, I think Liam was saying, people must send you in. They do, yeah. The yeah. stuff like the, this fella is whatever. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And you, you'll even see it yourself if you see a reel that's getting a ton of hate. And if you go down through the comments, you'll see my name. At go this stage, now yeah. I'm tagged in them. So I just go through whatever I'm tagged in and yeah. work with that. Um, but yeah. I think I'm going to manifest you and Paul Olima do sketches in here. Yeah, I was actually talking to him last night. Um, two favourite in <laughs> He put up a reel yesterday, right? He's hilarious. I love Paul Olima. He's one of the accounts I genuinely actually laugh out loud. Yeah. <clears throat> He put up real, his reel yesterday was him slagging a girl off that was binching. Now, I was going to do this video myself, <laughs> but I was like, no, we're going a different path now, we can't yeah, go Yeah, yeah, you can't go But around. the binge, it's just like that, she's doing a binge. And he did a reel yesterday, if you look at it, it's funny. And he just takes a piss out of it. And someone screenshot it and says, I think you should go after these two. It was actually one of the gladiators on TV he did a sketch with. And he says, I think you should call both these guys out. And I was kind of thinking, well, should I go for him? So I screenshot it, I said to Paul Lee, and I said, you're next. <laughs> and I just sent off a lot of laughing faces. <laughs> Do it. <laughs> he's the funniest He's brilliant, man. yeah. 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 He's so yeah, hopefully I get to meet up with him now, uh, shortly. He's and I remember like, when I followed him, he, I th man, he was on about, I don't know, was it 50 to 100k followers? Like, yeah. now he's That's not that long ago either, No, is it? and he's big on YouTube now as yeah. well. Like, yeah, he's massive huge. on um, YouTube. So every guest we bring on, you can ask me a question now, anything. Oh, not God, too perverted. Obviously. Not what? Not too perverted. <laughs> <laughs> so I can't ask about ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, what's next for the lab? Can I just say, I love the lab here. It's one of the best gyms I've ever trained in. It's fucking brilliant for me because I, up until I, before I joined here, I had to train out of three different gyms, yeah. which was a fucking nightmare for me because I spent the most time on the road then. And just for me coming in here, it's made my life 10 times easier. There's everything in here, there's all bits of equipment, there's bits of everything, there's new bits of equipment that I've never used before. Yeah. So for me, it's just fucking amazing. But what is next for the lab? Um, I'll get to that bit now in a second. So <laughs> when, I was, when I was talking to a friend, Owen, he was telling me the situation. And I, what I was saying to Owen is, 
if Pau was in Lo Man Manchester or England, gyms be, you're coming to mine. They'd be fighting for you, like. Yeah, yeah. So that's why I like, said to Owen, get him in here, whatever he wants, we'll get him, like. Because yeah. we want a bit of everything in here. So you know, strongman, high rocks, powerlifters, bodybuilders. That's why we just kind of created everything. And I want mm. to make it, like, you know, as I always say to fellas and the lads in the, the lab, things break in the gym. You yeah. just have to get over it and move on, fix it, move on. <coughs> Machines go all the time, holes come in the wall, it happens. Yeah. And we just fucking kind of move on for it. So when we found out you were coming, I had to buy more plates, a lot more. <laughs> um, and I had to make sure they were the competition ones. We had to buy another like, deadlift platform just in case there were young fellas coming in. Um, because obviously you're a professional athlete, like, mm. just give you free membership thing. We've we seen it as, as well, like, you know, nice fella, 250 thousand followers <laughs> all you have to do is tag the lab and people yeah, see that exactly, so yeah. i seen it more as a place like to get everyone in but also for marketing as well like yeah. but also like your ireland's strongest man five times if there was another gym like mine we'd probably be fighting we'd probably be texting you i'll give you this and if <coughs> you come back with pal i'll give yeah. you this you know yeah. that, i think that's the irish mentality around mm -hmm. um this place anyway. but for the lab it would either be cracking to next door half or it would have to be build in the future, yeah. if, the, if that's the way it's going. But it would have to be a lot more, I was thinking of opening a second one, but I'd rather one massive one, yeah. do you know? And where people come to travel, mm. to just the lab. Yeah, yeah. So we, we've talked about opening a second one, but I'd rather just pump everything into here yeah. and just kind of open the big one. Yeah. Like what I was thinking is, if we got an expansion was to build a high rocks area but then to have your own strongman yeah so yeah. when you come in you're just in there and you're you know rather on your own but uh it'd be definitely that more videographers more youtube constant content <laughs> basically try to get like you know connections in like say like yourself you yeah, bring yeah. you like if you brought paul and lima down yeah yeah straight you know <laughs> if you brought strongman down yeah. you know so yeah we're, we're actually grateful that you were you're training mm. here so it's a really good fucking it's a good it's a good thing yeah. Because we started in a little shitty shed. <laughs> yeah. We all did. Yeah. I started in a shitty shed out in Monaghan. <laughs> a pigsty, actually. Yeah. So, yeah. So, we all started in the sheds. So, I started. So, so, message today is starting a shed. <laughs> all right, guys. So, we are going to end this video. We want to thank Pad Oyer so much. Um, this video is dedicated to his friend that if there is anyone struggling, please reach out and talk to people because a problem half is a problem shared. Is that it? No, problem shared, yep. problem half. Is that? So check you in the next one.